And so the question we, we often get here is when do you start training? And that's a great question because I think it depends on Gnarly. Jokingly, when uh, she was born, we weren't here. We were out to Pheasant Fest, but Jason said she basically walked out of her mother. So. Yeah. Hi, folks. Welcome to Bird Dogs Afield. We're here today with Jason Carter. Jason, welcome. Hi. You bet. And uh, Jason is a professional trainer with Merrimeeting Kennels. Jason, tell us a little bit about what we're going to see. Well, what I like to do today is I like to take um, people through what it takes to train a versatile hunting dog. All the steps from right from puppyhood all the way to more advanced work. And just to give the people an idea of what it takes um, to train them and to put them through the different things that will get them to where they want to be. Wonderful. Let's go do it. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Folks, just a couple of words before we join Jason in the field. I want to thank the entire Carter family, Jason, Blaine, Patty, for contributing to this series of training videos. And we have five segments in this series. Be sure to watch all five segments. They're all very good. This is the first one. This is about puppy socialization and a timetable for training your puppy. Watch this and be sure and catch the other four. Thank you. Okay, we have Patty Carter here. Um, she's one of our trainers here at Merrimean Kennels. And she has her new pup, uh, Wicked Nile. Um, Gnarly's how old now? Gnarly's eight weeks. Go eight, yeah, eight weeks, a couple days, yeah. So, yeah. And so, the question we, we often get here is when do you start training? And that's a great question because I think it depends on Gnarly. Jokingly, when uh, she was born, we weren't here. We were out to Pheasant Fest, but Jason said she basically walked out of her mother. So, yeah. <laughs> she's a big girl. She's, a, she's eight weeks. She, um, I'd say we started probably around five weeks old of age. She started doing odds and ends and and now she's she comes out here and she looks to train. She jumps up and down the training tables. It's all positive training. Which brings up a good point is is how do you develop that training attitude? Food. Yeah. Yep. We we, we used to wait in uh, for quite a bit of time to see if uh, let the dog develop, let the dog uh, grow up. But now what we're doing is we're starting uh, training earlier using pleasure and treats and bait and prey drive and play drive and all the different drives in the dog that, that gets know, them enjoying what I they're know. doing. They're food driven. Mother, that's their whole life is survival. In the first seven weeks of their life that they're with their mom, their, their, their goal is to eat. So you can just channel those traits into, you know, fun training. So you rattle the food bowl, they all come running. So you got to utilize that later on in life. So. So we do. Right, right around four weeks, we, we, we get them out of the, um, out of the pen. And we start introducing them Hold to uh, ground, wet ground, um, different uh, uh, foliage. We get them outdoors, um, concrete, tar, Nani. Nani. different Good flooring. Girl. What happens is you, you build up their temperament, Nani. and Good they job. start they start. Um, being job. able to handle different training situations better, and you start you start Me? creating a stronger nerve in the dog Good by job. doing that earlier. Then Good later job. on, we we start uh, introducing food right around six weeks as bait. Bait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ju I just would start using my my voice I use with puppies and start reinforcing layering and food with uh, my voice, and it's just amazing how fast. They pick it up. Now she sits, I have her sitting and waiting to be fed. She knows where she gets fed and she runs, she runs into the room to get, and I make her sit and we haven't quite got the bowl to hit the floor. When the bowl hits the floor, that's game on. So yeah, but it's, it's fun. And there, this is the age, it's such a rewarding time to train because they learn so fast and then it'll slow down and you become, they got a little bit of defiant and teenagers move in, but it's just a great- Bird dogs a field. Presented by Native Performance Dog Food, providing performance diets for the canine athlete. And brought to you in part by RST, manufacturers of short chamber, low pressure shot shells. Mud River Dog Products, fundamentally changing the expectations of the hunter and dog enthusiast. Pete Shoe Dryer, inventor of the footwear dryer. Take on the nuisance of foot odor. Wooden Stream, outdoor footwear, outfitting adventures since 1957. Visit woodenstream.com for a dealer near you. Canine Active, 
providing safe, non-toxic pain relief for your dog. So you're developing a, a training attitude. The dog understands how to work for you and how to, how to get the treat. And that, that positive experience Daddy. where you're where Daddy. the party's at. Naughty. Now, see, she <laughs> has distractions here. <laughs> Naughty. Greta, come. But the you. food is overriding her play right now. So that's good. Good. And because sometimes she opts to not come because she's rather do what she wants to do. So the food will, will change that attitude and then she'll it'll learn to work for me and be a ham. <laughs> so, so if you don't mind, if you could take us through some of the, we have a bunch, we put out a bunch of obstacles here mm -hmm. and, and go through what your routine is. Okay. And what we're looking for when you're doing this is we want to look at the eye contact of the dog and the relationship the dog has with you. Okay. Well, I'm working on that. We haven't quite got. The, she looks for food. Well, this is what yeah. it's about. Right. Right. We're, we're training. Naughty. This is real training. Naughty. Come on. Come on. Come on, Naughty. Come on. Come on. Up here. Let's go. Oh, what a good girl. What a good girl. Come on. Good job. Come on, Naughty. Good girl. Come on. Come on, Naughty. Good job. <gasps> Good girl. So if you look right there, you and see you see the puppy looking right up. But I always make sure I feed her below because she want, she'll jump up. So if I reward her when she's down, then she'll, she won't learn to jump up. But the eye contact, naughty. Good girl. And now I've done a little bit of teaching her that I can walk away and come back. And that's the insecurity thing when they're little is to leave them. So this is a big step. It's just being able to step away and so, come back and don't worry if she loses her attention it comes back hey guys well that's a point girl. to bring to is, is how long are your training okay, sessions good job oh do you do five form? minutes yeah. five minutes i come out here if i got five minutes in between something and and just real run around the course and she knows she'll just do everything without me in that little barrel over there this is what i did the other day because she's not big enough to get on it naughty but if you watch Gnarly, she's looking for whatever you want her to do. She is dying to go do it. So that's a, you know, it's a big deal for a little dog to go in a hole. Yeah. But that's like going in a kennel. You know, I always just throw treats in my dog's kennel and they love going in. Gnarly, Gnarly, come. Come, come right here. Oh, good job. Good job. Yeah, she just, she loves to work. And so that's where we begin with the puppies. Is with we, the puppies. We want them to be able to understand what you're asking of them but to enjoy working for you because if your right. dog's not enjoying its work then you're going to have some issues that, that and it's come a along. team we're, we develop a team so you don't want your dog to go out there and independently do what it wants in the woods so if we work with the team now and we you have to do it by a vo voice and you know and there's a, there's a reason for us to be together and right now it's food naughty and warmth naughty <laughs> Good job, Gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, folks. Just a quick break for a sponsor's message. We'll be right back with more Bird Dogs of Hi, folks. Our dogs work very hard for us. They need and deserve a high-performance dog food. My choice is Native. Native has been formulated for the canine athlete. It has none of the low-value hard to digest fillers such as soy, corn, wheat. It has only high grade chicken and high grade digestible grains. It comes in four levels of fat and protein. Each level is formulated for the stress and activity level for your dog at that time. Make the switch today. Your dog will be happy and so will you. I'm wearing the new Maniac boot from Wooden Stream. Hunting boots, more like athletic footwear for hunters. At just over two pounds, this may be the lightest hunting boot ever. More important, Maniac's free floating lace system connects to the sole. So when you lace up, the boots conform to your feet. This dramatically reduces boot slop, toe jam, and heel lift, meaning virtually no hot spots, blisters, or sore feet. Maniac, try one on at your local Wooden Stream dealer. But a dog that wants to work, acts differently than a dog that has to work. Yeah, oh, and you really, you channel it right now with food. Absolutely. You do it. And, and I, people come, they say they don't do food, and I go, ooh, okay. So what we're gonna do now? <laughs> so the process we use um, is essentially the clicker training. 
we're just putting yeah. in verbal cues. I'm not coordinated place. enough to do the chick, the clicker. So I, so I tagged her behavior, good girl, with my voice. Right? Naughty, come. Come on, Naughty, come. Good girl. So that's, I mean, that's how I do it. And, I, and you do the same. Absolutely, absolutely. So after this age, we get into some, a y- younger pup. This is Gritta. Uh, Gritta's a, a little under a year of age. She's, she's now done most of her heavy lifting as training goes. She's, she's well into her retrieving. Um, she's starting to point pretty, pretty nicely, at least on wild birds. This, this will be a test for us today in that she hasn't seen a whole lot of pen raised birds yet. She had a nice hunting season under and she's doing well. So what I'd like to go from here is, is what, I guess a, another question is, what do people need to be, have the tools when you go out in the field and be able to handle your dog? Well, my next step with her are the walks in the woods because she's going out of sight a little bit. She hasn't got the independence yet. And it's going to come, believe me. But, um, and what I started with the litter before her um, I take them out one at a time, and I'd have a little jar of dog food, um, and I rattle it, and they came to the rattle. But then they'd go off and they do their little independent search. So I allowed them to become independent. But when I felt uncomfortable that they were too independent, as little puppies out there, I'd rattle it, and they come and they get their reward. So and sometimes you have to start with two. Gnarly. Stop. Stop. So what she's doing here is I want to get down and play. <laughs> the puppy's trying to dictate what it wants to do at this point. And so she's going to ride it out. And this is another thing we, we do, um, especially when they're still all together as a litter, is we'll all hold them. And a lot of dip- different people will hold the puppy. We try to get them in as many different hands as possible. And just so they can have this understanding that, okay, you're, you have some restrictions. It's okay. But you're not going to get your way through struggling, through not listening. And so she's going to ride out this battle. When she submits, she could either give lots of praise or put the puppy down, which initially, which is what it wants to do anyway. Right, right. So you, ha- I mean, and you have to hand her like I would hand her to Jason, and she'd do exactly the same thing. And the worst thing that can happen is you go, oh, oh gosh, she's squirming. I'll put her down. So it is, or it is. She has to get used to it. And then we, we start at this age. Have you? I'm not sure if you have or not. Have you started um, any putting objects in or manipulating the mouth whatsoever? No. Well, my I play with the mouth, but I haven't done objects yet. But I'm not too far away from that. Okay. So the reason we do that uh, is no. we we want control of that mouth, obviously, Naughty. because we Naughty. we need to um, we need to consume what we're hunting, so we need it fit for the table. And so. When we start as a puppy, is we start being able to put our hand in the do- in the puppy's mouth, yep. and just being able to have the dog accept her hand going in. Good Initially, God. they fight, yes. but then you're gonna see. Do you want to do it on the table yeah. and try yeah. it? Yeah. She's try it over here. When she's squirming. Come here, naughty. Hi, folks. Just a quick break for a sponsor's message. We'll be right back with more bird dogs afield. Hi, Bird Dogs of Field viewers. I'm here today with Dylan, who's almost 10 years old and still hunting hard. So in order to help him, we use Canine Active. It's for working and hunting breeds, and it is my go-to for pain relief and for an anti-inflammatory. You can use it before strenuous activity to help keep them moving and help reduce muscle soreness, or you can use it after for recovery. Try it today, Canine Active. Hi friends. You know, whether you're a hiker, hunter, jogger, walker, all of those activities create sweat and moisture in your footwear. That moisture leads to bacteria, mildew, mold, all bad things for your feet. To eliminate that moisture, you need a peat shoe dryer. The new PowerCell peat eliminates that moisture and creates a better atmosphere for good foot health. Well, I put it in and I'm just teaching her. Because she was a single puppy, it was a big challenge. I didn't know, you know, because the, the litters teach them bite inhibition and she, her well, litter was you said like, bite in, in, inhibition. Right. So what is that? That means they can use their mouth, but they have to use it appropriately they can't like chomp so they have to 
you know, so with puppies, they, they, they will play harsh. So and you have to like, you don't, you tell them, you, and usually you just, you yell at them when it says, you say, ouch. And you'll see mom yell at them. You'll see their siblings yell at them. She has no siblings. Her siblings are from 13 to <laughs> one. So her, her, my, my pack of dogs at home are her family. Is her family. So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna hold her because I don't think at this point she'll bite you. Will she? Will she? Does she, she might bite you. <laughs> well, the, no, 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 that's what. No, no, she won't. What'd you got? What'd you got? Maybe, maybe she'll start licking, then maybe yeah, I can yeah. get a nibble. And what you do is when to, to create the bite inhibitors is you overreact. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you act more emotional than you really feel. Okay. And it teaches the dog that what it's doing is wrong. A lot, very similar to how the mother in the litter would, would deal with a puppy oh, yeah. for I'm done nursing, when, yeah, I'm, weaning. I'm, I'm weaning you, and if you touch my boobs one more time, you're going to get bit. And the mother does not, in the moment she, she, she will growl, she will put her teeth on the puppy, and then a moment later she kisses them. So it's the hot and cold that we're, she's teaching them, which will continue in our training too. And this is a good good thing that I, I, I tell a lot of my puppy buyers is to sit down. If you're watching TV and the dog wants to tear around the house, hold your puppy. Make it just relax. Watch your show. And the puppy doesn't get up until it settles. I don't think she's, you, you did a nice job with your bite inhibitors. I don't think she's going to bite me. But if she did, I, I would just overreact. Ah, no. And then just like the mother, the mother would go and nurture. Nurture right after. It looks like the mother's going to kill yep. the puppy. But right after she does that, she gums and nurtures the puppy and say, oh, you're okay. And we do that all the way through our training. If we, if we have to get into our dog and... Now's the time. Put her down. Yeah. She's oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good girl. <laughs> and anytime we break the dog down whatsoever, yep. we find the first opportunity to build them back up. And uh, I think that, that, that pretty much says how we start with our puppy training. Yep. Absolutely. So what Patty's doing here is Patty's doing working on her recall using place boards. What a place board does is it provides the dog a place to sit, to be, and when it does take that step off the place board, it's an obvious and clear mistake that you can show the dog that it's making creates real understanding and there's there's a hundred ways of using place boards in all parts of your training it's just a great tool and creates that that clear understanding in your training so what patty wants to try here is have her come from off the place board and onto the place board as your finish where where do you plan on having your dog finish yeah. yeah, you can duck. Yeah. I want her to go from this place board to this place board, except she doesn't have the patience at this age to wait for me to get to this place board. So I'm working. So I'll start. So you make the, start start the picture start. smaller. I have to make the picture smaller. Within, within the, the distance of the lead. Right. So, but I don't want to use my leash as a correction okay. on a puppy. Yeah. So that, uh, it's, just, it's just on her to keep her from playing with it. Right. You always want to have a line of control on your dog. So many people lose that line of control. Um, they want to go hands-free too soon on the lead. It's kind of like taking your hands off your, your bike the first day you, try, you learn to ride it. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. You always want to keep that line of control on your dog. So can you sit her here and bring her up onto the place board for a finish? Great. And, and is that when you you're working towards shaping your finished product? Is that is that where the finished product will be? You don't know yet. So then, why are you training it? Because it'll she'll come, and then she. I may choose. I'm just working on obedience now. I don't know. That's a good question. So um, I changed with my other dog halfway through. Really.
Well, well, you need to come up with that. I do. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> so you want your dog to either finish in the front, where you take the delivery and have a second command to finish to the side. You can have your dog come around. You can have the dog just come to one side and finish. It's really up to you. Yep. Yeah, you better get on that soon. Okay. <laughs> Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food, and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells, Mud River Dog Products, Peach Shoe Dryer, Wooden Stream Outdoor Footwear, and Canine Active.